Hi, everybody. Welcome to this live stream dedicated to red printing eucalyptus leaves. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicola Brown. I live and work in rural Ireland. I'm developing a sustainable textile practice. And after quite a number of years research, I grow my own eucalyptus trees. So please feel free to drop a comment and let us know where you are watching from. Already, um, it's wonderful. We have people from all over the place actually tuning in. Elizabeth is in Pennsylvania. Tammy is in Santa Cruz. Um, here we have Belgium in the house. This is Karen. So it's wonderful to see so many of you here already. And I'm delighted that you are here at the correct time because I actually made a mistake uh, in thinking that Ireland is on GMT. Ireland and UK have now moved to summertime, so we're actually GMT plus one. So thank you again so much for all tuning in. Um, Betty's here from Israel, London, Scotland, Brazil, truly multi, uh, multicultural and uh, many, many um, many different parts of the world. So I'm not going to delay you at all, but I would like to say that if you have a question to ask, because I am manning this live stream by myself, as we progress, if you want to ask me a question, you can drop it into the comments, but if you put three question marks or even four in front of your question, and three question marks afterwards, that will make it a lot easier for me to see your question and you will have the best chance of having it answered. If you're watching the video as a replay on YouTube afterwards, you can also leave me a comment and I hope to be able to get back to you via the chat facility or the comment facility, but it won't be live. So if you have a comment live, you're going to just put a couple of question marks, three or four in front of the comment, and then a few question marks afterwards as well. That would be really, really helpful for me. So thank you very much. So um, this is great. I'm seeing loads of you in here. And I have a very, a sort of a little surprise for you. So um, to say thanks, and because I know so many people who start eco printing, whether you are working with mordants or as I choose to do in the dirty pot without mordants, you are wondering which eucalyptus leaves give crisp and clear red prints. That is what this video is all about. But I have actually produced a little, a simple little PDF download, and it's all about red printing eucalyptus leaves. So the slides that I'm going to share during this presentation are all collated into a free PDF. So there's no need for you to take screenshots or anything as I progress. Uh, if you are interested, there will be a link added to the video description. As soon as I finish streaming, I will upload that link. And if you're already a member of my EcoPrint and Wet Felt Club, I will also upload the PDF file to the library there. But if you're not a member and you would like to join my mailing list and receive a free copy of all the slides that are in this presentation, please just uh, fill out the little uh, form, click the link in the video description afterwards. So that's a little uh, gift to you. So um, what I am going to share is which eucalyptus varieties give me very reliable prints when I'm working in the dirty pot. And if you are not totally familiar with um, the phrase dirty pot, so you might be asking what is eco printing in the dirty pot? So eco printing in the dirty pot is working without traditional powdered mordants. And a powdered mordant is a metal salt such as aluminium sulfate, ferrous sulfate, it could be copper sulfate, uh, aluminium acetate. It's a powdered metal salt used traditionally to help fix color on fabric. Now, I am not saying that it is wrong to use those powdered mordants, but there are health implications and the worst damage can be done to your lungs by inhaling these powders. 
So what I do is I use the pot as mordant, which is a health conscious and environmentally mindful way of working. I harness the power of the metal pot, whether it's aluminium, whether it's cast iron or ferrets or copper, copper pot, I harness that metal to in some way replicate the results you would get when working with powdered mordants. You don't get such a strong effect when using the pot as mordant. And also some vegetation, including eucalyptus, needs to be processed for significantly longer than it would do if you were working without the mordants. But in simple terms, we are working without powdered mordants if we work in the dirty pot. We can get fantastic reds from eucalyptus and all the eucalyptus varieties that I am mentioning and that I share in my um, slides and that are in the PDF file. If you choose to work with mordants, you will also get excellent prints. Um, so I think I'm just going to start and I'm going to just share this first slide. So the first thing is that all parts of the eucalyptus tree, they provide wonderful vegetation for any eco printer. Now, this does not mean that all the leaves will print red, but every single eucalyptus variety, the leaves, the bark, the seed pods, it will give very, very beautiful color. And not only will it give color, it will release color in the pot and you can get prints, but the natural dye that the eucalyptus tree, the leaves, the bark, the twigs release, that natural dye is substantive. So what that means is it does not need a traditional powdered mordant to either print or to dye your fabric. So your eucalyptus prints and any color you get from eucalyptus vegetation in your processing pot, that color will be totally color and wash fast. What can um, be obvious when you have more experience is that if you use certain red giving eucalyptus leaves on alum mordanted fabric, the prints may be more orange on the fabric that's been mordanted with alum, and they may actually be more red on the fabric that has not been mordanted. So that is something that it's really interesting to consider. So it is also important to note that the only way of identifying which leaves release color if you don't actually know the named variety of the eucalyptus tree the only way you can identify if you're going to get the reds that so many people want to achieve is taking the time to experiment for yourself and this became extremely obvious to me when i was visiting Australia and facilitating workshops in Australia for the first time. I actually was expecting every eucalyptus tree to give red prints. I honestly was, even though I didn't have that experience in Ireland. So trust me, many, many eucalyptus leaves or many, many trees do not give red prints. But what I'm going to share with you here today are varieties that consistently and reliably give me red prints on protein, based fabric and protein based fabric is wool it's silk it's it's um cashmere anything coming from an from an um animal base but you can also achieve lovely prints on cellulose fabric with these leaves but they won't necessarily print red so that's just something to note not all um, eucalyptus, in fact, many of them without a mordant will print red on cellulose, but these ones that I'm sharing are all going to print red on wool, silk, or mohair, etc. And I see a question from Sandra about are eucalyptus trees difficult to grow? And in fact, I think I'm going to answer that question now. Um, Sandra, many, many of the eucalyptus trees, including the first named, first one that I'm going to share with you, they are actually hardy up to minus 18, between minus 14 and minus 18 degrees Celsius. So that is really quite cold. And so here in Ireland, I have actually planted over 900 eucalyptus trees on my property. And at the beginning, when I started um, eco printing, and I couldn't access eucalyptus leaves. I would buy them in a florist. 
And then I started seeing the odd eucalyptus tree in a garden center. I would pick them up regardless of what the tree cost and what the variety was. But I soon discovered that many gave no red at all. And it took quite a while before I identified ones that do give a red. But I would say that the majority of them grow well here in Ireland. They like the mild temperate climate with plenty of rain. What they don't appear to like in Ireland, if it's very, very windy, I have lost some through damage with wind, they've fallen over. And I have also lost some through hard frost. But overall, I would say they grow very well. Um, so it is something um, to consider is growing your own. And I'm going to share it within the slides. Some of them are suitable for smaller gardens if you don't have a bigger space. So. Um, the only way of trying unidentified leaves to see if they give you red is to, is to literally try them. And I recommend in the dirty pot, if your leaves are totally unidentified, I recommend you start by processing them for five hours, a long boil. Um, and that sounds like a very long time. If they have um, given red prints after five hours, you can try four and you can start working backwards. And the leaves that I'm sharing here, I will just tell you how, how long a processing time you need, and that would be at a high boil. I see a question from Elizabeth about dried eucalyptus leaves. That is going to be answered in a few minutes. So um, just a note, the following varieties will also give excellent prints on fabric that has been mordanted traditionally, but the colors may be different as I have already mentioned. So this first variety here this is i i usually refer to it as eucalyptus parvifolia because that's what i bought it as but it has actually been renamed it's eucalyptus parvula it used to be known as eucalyptus parvifolia this give, gives excellent reds after two and a half hours in a boiling pot so I'm not talking about a steaming pot. I'm talking about a pot where that water is bubbling away and boiling. So I have even got very nice red prints after two hours during workshops, but two and a half hours will give a more intense color. It's a slow growing, smaller tree. And this particular one is hardy to between minus 14, even up to minus 18 degrees Celsius. I say minus 16 on the slide, but in fact, I have read up to minus 18 for this particular variety. So this would be a really good um, variety if you were interested in planting something in a small garden. And here you can see the color and the crisp, strong red prints from this particular tree. They are the red leaves there. This is a pulsary wool, and I process this in a cast iron pot. Um, the big pot that many of you who follow me on Instagram will see when I do shots of um, the light changing over the mountain. It's a big wood-fired boiler in front of my house and I process this piece in that pot. Now the ready brown prints that are there as well, those are actually prints from eucalyptus bark. All the bark prints really very beautifully. So we have an interesting question here about does the age of the tree influence the color? And this is a really excellent question. So the, the age of the tree, whether the leaves are juvenile or they're more mature leaves, the soil conditions, the growing conditions, the climate that you live in, the growing zone that you live in, all of these affect the color. And only by getting to know eucalyptus trees in your own locality can you identify which may give you the, um, the, the results that you want. Now, I do see a question from Elizabeth Hay and from Gloria uh, that I will be addressing in a few minutes. So um, I'm going to go back to adding these slides in. So these are eucalyptus um, prints. They're little red ones um, on wool. Eucalyptus nicolii, these are a longer leaf. So the previous leaves, if I just slip back, they're a shorter leaf. So parvula or parvifolia, they're shorter leaves 
and in fact, the juvenile foliage from the parvi folia is even smaller again. But the nicolii, if you're looking for a leaf that gives incredibly beautiful, longer red prints, this is a total winner. So an absolute total winner. Um, I do think, though, it is not quite so hardy in climates such as Ireland, England, Scotland, etc. Um, my tree is growing very well. It's grown very tall. I have two more to plant. However, in very recent heavy wind, my big Nicolii has almost uh, fallen over. So I'm actually thinking of cutting the whole, you know, more than half the tree down. And in that way, I will be able to continue to get, get leaves, hopefully, and I'll be able to support the base of it or the trunk of it. But I have two more smaller Nicolii to plant as well. So there is a eucalyptus variety called Gunnii, and a named variety of Gunnii is called Azura. And this tree um, was bred um, to be suitable for a smaller garden. So I cannot emphasize enough the um, Parvula or par Parvifolia and the Azura. They are both trees that I think would be suited to the smaller garden. This particular um, gunnii is quite slow growing compared to the um, just the plain gunnii without the named variety, just the regular gunnii. So this is quite small growing and the shape of the leaves is very, very nice. So <clears throat> one note of caution, this is in relation to eucalyptus of all sorts. The juvenile foliage on Many, many trees looks very, very similar, but the older foliage on some varieties also looks like the juvenile on others. So they can appear very similar. So don't be fooled just in thinking if your leaves are round, they come from one particular tree. They might actually be the uh, younger vegetation from uh, a tree that has very long leaves. Anyway, um, we have a question. I mean, there are several questions and I am going to be answering them, but I'm just going to go back here because um, we have a question here from Anina. How long should I boil Nicolii in a dirty pot on cellulose? So the thing about doing any printing in the dirty pot, if you're working with cellulose, if you're doing a 40 second rust water dip Anina on cellulose, um, I would say you can just do the two and a half hours, no problem, but you won't get the red that you will on the protein-based fabric. So it doesn't matter what your leaves, it doesn't matter what the fabric is, you always give the leaves the amount of time that they need in the pot, as opposed to the time that you think the fabric might need. So um, I'm going to keep going. And then I'll answer a question about dried leaves in a minute. So here is um, just an example of how both the Nicolii and the Eucalyptus gunnii have printed on a wet felted wall hanging. Now, this particular piece was felted for an exhibition that was a joint exhibition between the Finnish uh, Felting Society and Feltmakers Ireland here in Ireland. So this was a long piece that actually is currently on display in Enniscorthy Castle, but has been on display previously in Finland in an exhibition and also in Portumna Castle in Ireland. It's got highly textured um, silk fabric on one side. You can see that the top is folded over. So the rounder and um, more pointy leaves, those ones are the Azura, and then the longer thin leaves are the Nicolii. And if you're a wet felt maker, you can um, add your leaves on either the wool side of Nuno felt or on the silk side, or as I did in the case of this wall hanging, on both sides, and they will print everywhere. Now, many eucalyptus never release reds. And when I was um, facilitating um, a wonderful retreat um, on Lake Macquarie in Australia, pre-lockdown, this tree, I was trying many, many different eucalyptus trees that grew in the area where I was staying and also where we had the retreat at my friend Athena's property. And this tree reliably gave me these beautiful greens. 
I was never able to identify what it was. And it was the only tree that gave such a beautiful green. And there was also a sort of a purpley color from some parts of the leaf as well. You can see that shadowing underneath. But if you find a green giving eucalyptus tree, um, I think it's absolutely wonderful. But also, um, what can be very interesting, um, eucalyptus archery, it prints a goldy brown color for me most times. But after very heavy rain, and if there's been extended rain, it often prints more green and also purple. So the purplish prints on that cashmere um, dress that I'm wearing there, they are coming from archery. It's an interesting um, gum. It can also be called the cider gum. Um, so that, it, I didn't find this out until we'd had a very heavy extended period of rain in the summer a few summers ago. But since then, I've kept an eye on it. So it seems to be very responsive to how much rain is in the, um, how much, you know, to climate change, basically. And um, at other times, it prints a much more gold color. So here's another, um, another really good red printing leaf. So eucalyptus um, pulver ulenta. And this particular variety is called baby blue. There are those little red prints there on that particular felt, felt tunic. However, um, I did try and take some photographs today of the actual leaves themselves for you. They really are very small. And uh, sadly, I wasn't able to because believe it or not, over the winter, the trees have grown so quickly. And um, even though this isn't a very fast growing tree, but I didn't realize how much they grew during the winter and I can't actually reach any of the leaves whatsoever. So I'm going to have to get a specialist in to actually um, <laughs> top the trees, I think. And topping means just cutting off that growing tip and cutting them down a little bit so they'll bush out more and give more vegetation. Now, this is going to ask, answer some questions. So Elizabeth has a question here about can dried eucalyptus leaves be used or do they need to be fresh? And uh, Gloria's question, do they have to be green to print or can I use dry? So we have another question. Does the color change if the leaves are dried compared to fresh? So all of these are excellent questions and eucalyptus core data is one of my all time favorite leaves to print with. And there's an arboretum approximately one hour, about, about one hour's drive from me, there's an arboretum. And what I do there is I will go and I will spend four or five hours and I collect every single eucalyptus cordata leaf that is on the ground under my favorite trees. They give amazing, amazing, amazing prints and the leaves can be stored dry for multiple years. And all you need to do to reconstitute eucalyptus leaves is to soak them either in boiling water for or very hot water for a few minutes or soak them overnight in colder water. And what can be really, really interesting, and I would recommend this for people with a little bit more experience because you don't want to change the color totally, but do you see how that dry leaf that's in my finger, do you see how it's got little subtle graduations of color on it there? You can even see in the prints behind the, the prints on the lamb's wool that there is a little subtle variation in color. Well, if I soaked those leaves in water until they were soft and pliable, and if I then soak them for, let's say even 15 minutes in rust water, the leaves would absorb the rust into the leaf itself and you would get darker prints around the edge of the leaf and any areas where there were little, um, say nibbles out of the leaves or decomposition. So you do not need to have perfect leaves to give you very beautiful prints. You just need to make sure that if you're using dry, um, dry leaves that you can, you know, you can use them dry, but you will, they'll, they'll crack. Whereas if you soak them, you will make them more um, uh, pliable. And in my experience, the color certainly does not, um, 
change for the worse, it's possible that the dried leaves even give stronger color, to be honest. So that is something that um, I have no hesitation in saying dried eucalyptus leaves, if they are a variety that is going to print, they print wonderfully. And for those of you who um, joined and you missed at the very beginning, I just want to say that um, I am giving you the opportunity to have um, to, to subscribe to me. I'm going to put a link into the um, video description below to subscribe to my newsletter with tips and tutorials and advice. And um, as a thank you, you will get a free PDF download of all these slides with the images and all the names, etc. So you will have that for future reference if you would like afterwards. So um, I'm going to go back. Uh, here I'm going to go on so I have a few other varieties that I would like to recommend these are varieties that I have growing here uh, on my property I have not experimented with all of these in other countries but eucalyptus nightens which has huge leaves and grows really really well in Ireland and um, that is giving me fantastic prints Eucalyptus subcrenulata, fantastic prints, and Eucalyptus gunii, fantastic prints. So I've already mentioned gunii azura, but the, but the standard gunii that hasn't been developed to grow smaller, it works absolutely wonderfully as well. And then the final thing I would like to say before I answer more of your questions is that if you don't have access to fresh eucalyptus vegetation or dried eucalyptus vegetation, obviously it's wonderful to be able to go out into your own locality and pick your leaves. But if you don't have access to, to eucalyptus growing locally, you can go to your florist. And silver dollar is what I, I now have it growing here. It's eucalyptus cinerea. That is what many, many people um, have access to from their florist. It's a beautiful leaf and 99% of the time it gives wonderful red prints. Then there's another one that you might find in floral bouquets. And I don't know if your own local florist will stock it, but you could certainly ask. And it's eucalyptus lunata and the variety, it's moon lagoon. It's a very, very, very small little leaf and it gives beautiful red prints absolutely beautiful and if I had um, those leaves and they were very dry I might just sprinkle the dry leaves all over the piece and print with it and not bother reconstituting them because they're so tiny they're like little speckles and for those of you living in America um, you may find that you sorry I wanted to remove that. If you live in America or Canada, you may find that you can ask for something that flowers may call seeded eucalyptus. And those leaves, usually probably cinerea, they will have wonderful buds on them, the flower buds, and those buds print beautifully as well. Sometimes the leaves don't print, as I discovered here in Ireland, and the buds do, but usually the leaves print and the buds. And in in um, Michigan as well, we came across something that they called willow eucalyptus, but I actually believe that that eucalyptus was eucalyptus nicolii, but the florist was calling it willow eucalyptus. It gave excellent red prints. So now I'm going to look down through, there's just uh, only a couple of questions I think that I may not have answered. So now is your time. If you have a question and you would like to ask me something about eucalyptus leaves and working with them, now is the time please to drop them in the comments. And like Fiona has done here, if you could put question marks in front and behind, that would be great. And um, the other thing is actually, if you feel that you are getting um, good value from this video and you enjoy the conversations that we have about different eco printing and wet felting topics, please consider subscribing to my channel, my YouTube channel, and then you will get updates about, um, you know, what's upcoming. So um, Fiona's question, I'm just going back. Excuse me one second. Um, so here we go. So um, Fiona is asking, can you mix cellulose and protein-based fabric in the same 
dirty pot. Absolutely. You can process anything in the pot at the one time. And although I work 99% of the time without using traditional powdered mordants, for those of you who work with powdered mordants, providing you have mordanted your fabric correctly and given it a rinse before you have wrapped it up with the vegetation, I have absolutely no problem um, if I'm facilitating a workshop abroad on, in combining mordanted fabric and unmordanted fabric in the dirty pot. You can get some wonderful, wonderful eco prints on mordanted fabric in the dirty pot as well as on unmordanted. So no need to worry, you can put all sorts of fabrics in at the one time. Now, um, Tammy has a good a tip here for those in the US, and this is absolutely true. Trader Joe's um, sells silver dollar in their floral department. And um, I can remember a funny, um, a really funny thing that happened when I was facilitating a, re a retreat at um, with my great buddy Meredith Smith uh, up in the cabin at Lake Tahoe and one of the participants was coming every day in the morning and she was popping into a trader's Trader Joe's and she was picking up um, flowers and one day she came with these leaves and she wanted to try them and they looked quite pink and anyway, she put them in and they gave incredible color in the dirty pot. And it wasn't until I had a good look at them, I realized that they had been dyed pink. So in fact, there was dye in the leaves. The Somebody had put the leaves into dye and the leaf had absorbed that, that dye liquid, the pink liquid. And that was what had colored her, her piece. It wasn't actually the leaves themselves at all. So um, thank you for saying thank you. Um, and just to say for future, um, for future things, so those of you, for example, whoever asked this question, um, does the age of the tree influence the color or when somebody put something like this, when you can't see your face compared to, um, or, or your um, Facebook profile, compared, for example, Tammy's Facebook profile is here. That just means that you haven't given StreamYard, which is the um, software or facility, whatever you want to call it, that I use for doing these live streams. You can give them permission and they can share your Facebook profile. Um, so next time, if you join me again, you can um, give them access and they will be able to, um, we will all be able to see your name as well and who you are. So Elizabeth, yep. Thanks, Tammy. Yes, Trader Joe's is brilliant. And I do advise you to become friendly with your local florist. For example, um, rose leaves. We're talking about eucalyptus now, but most florists have a little tool and they strip all the leaves off the stem of a rose and they will give you those rose leaves free. And I found a florist that not only would she give me all the rose leaves free because she threw them out, she asked me, did I want buckets? And I got about 20 buckets because when she gets a delivery of, of flowers, and I believe many of them come from Amsterdam here in Ireland. So um, she was getting these buckets and they just had to go to the recycle center. So you may very well find that your florist will actually give you buckets they will give you vegetation and they will give you you can buy your eucalyptus leaves from them and I do know that um it might be good foods or it might be Trader Joe's in in um, Lexington also sometimes if you become friendly with people there if they're throwing out bunches of flowers when they start to fade often in the mixed bunches of flowers you'll find somebody friendly who will give them to you and you will get your eucalyptus sprigs free so um, it's been a pleasure. Does anybody have a final question before I um, before I call it quits today? Um, don't forget, as soon as I say goodbye, I'm going to upload um, a link into the video description. So if you would like um, a free PDF download with all those um, slides that I shared and um, you can just fill in your information, subscribe, and you will then be able to download that. So I think that's it. I have no more um, questions popping up. So I would just like to say thank you so much, everybody. Um, thanks, Tammy. I'm delighted to hear you. You're learning something because when people have a lot of experience, it's always something I hope that um, I can share some of my tips and advice with you and that you will learn things. 
Um, okay, so actually here is a question. I have bought some very beautiful and rare eucalyptus with very big seed pods. Have you ever tried using eucalyptus pods for the second time? So I put the vegetation that I have used, I put that vegetation into, if I've already printed with it, I put it into my eco printing pot and it then continues to release color for three, four or five more times processing. It enhances the pot liquid. I do know people who sometimes um, print again with their eucalyptus leaves, but in my experience, if you're working in the dirty pot without the traditional powdered mordants, you're boiling for a lot longer than if you were working with mordants. And in my experience, they don't print well a second time. However, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try it. And my great friend, Athena, she does wonderful shiburi using big eucalyptus seed pods. So she will actually tie them into her fabric and then she'll print or dye or whatever. And you may get some color from the eucalyptus seed pods in that um, in that case. So I'm just going to go down here uh, and see. Betty, thank you so much for joining all the way uh, from Israel. Really, really delighted you were here. Thanks, Margaret. Sandy, again, remember, if, if, if you see Facebook user coming up with a comment you have written, next time, allow StreamYard access to Facebook and we will see your face like Lenina, I hope I pronounced that correctly, has. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. And here we have a question about um, boiling in hot water for a long time may spoil protein fibers. So if you're not used to working in the eco pot and you are interested in learning more about it, I have an ebook and that will give a really, really good solid foundation for the basics of eco printing in the dirty pot. So when we create our bundles, whether they're wool, silk, pro, you know, cashmere, I'm just going to go back now and find the cashmere dress. Yep. So this here is actually a cashmere dress that I'm wearing. No problem whatsoever boiling it for, for five hours, four or five hours in the dirty pot. Because the bundles are tied really tightly and we're not agitating them. It's heat and agitation that causes damage to the fiber and fabric much more than just heat by itself. So there is not a problem um, processing them and boiling them for hours in the dirty pot, whether it's silk or wool. And if you're interested in learning um, about working in the dirty pot, my book is something that you might consider looking into. Now I'm going back to the comments. Um, so um, Elizabeth has a question. Yeah, Elizabeth, I do recommend other leaves, but that's not what this video is about. However, I would just like to say rose, blackberry and um, raspberry all print well. And I have other videos. So if you look at my um, eco printing playlist on YouTube, you will be able to get tips and advice also about storing, saving leaves, different vegetation to try. So all of that is on my, um, on that eco printing playlist. <laughs> okay. So, um, you're very welcome, Elizabeth. Um, steeple woman from Maine, USA. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, oh, Phoenix, Arizona. I just love Arizona. Hi, Mary. Um, hi, Helga. Um, ah, whole foods. Okay. Maybe actually it's not good foods. Maybe it's whole foods. Thank you. So whole foods in the USA, Helga, is saying has eucalyptus bouquets of all kinds. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, here's somebody who's felting to eco print. Wonderful. I hope you're in the membership club because I'd love to see that afterwards. Uh, Tina, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining in. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. I'm going to drop, um, drop a link for those of you who are interested in getting my PDF. I'm going to drop that into the video description. It will probably show up about five minutes after this ends. So thank you all so much and um, 
Eileen is asking, do I ever teach in New York, USA? I, I have taught quite extensively in America, Eileen, but not for several years. And I haven't actually taught in New York. So no, but I'm always open <laughs> to suggestions. Uh, I personally don't have time to organize any workshops whatsoever myself. I will be back teaching in Australia next year, but because mum is not well and one of my father's relatives isn't well, I'm doing, I'm helping care for them. So I would be in a position next year potentially to maybe travel and facilitate a workshop, but not do any organizing. Um, so uh, Tammy's saying thanks for the tip about Whole Foods and somebody else is saying thanks again and hope you have a creative weekend. Um, I, I wish everyone a creative weekend. Thank you so much, folks. And I would like to say over and out again from Clashine. Thank you.